All right, everybody, you can lower the music because it's the spin cast cycling show with our UCI World Cycling Esports World Championships 2024. A new kind of blob. What are we going to call this? The swarm? It's like a swarm. I call like, it random chaos of bad animation. Yeah. It's an, oh, it, the animation's it too much. The animation's too it, much. It reminds me of like a, a, a school of fish. Yeah, like salmon. I was thinking that too. Yeah, it's like sw salmon swimming yeah, upstream. But, but it doesn't look that much different than what's behind Brian White's head right now, yeah. except for, you know, there's <laughs> three individuals behind Brian and not 10 of them occupying the same space. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, was Kate, that was Casey Shum, by the way. No, introductions, I'm Brian Kellison, Brian White, Lisa Reese, and Casey Shum's joining us this week as we discuss many things. And the first thing on the table is my whoosh. 2004, 2024 UCI World Championships for esports. It's official. My whoosh first semifinal. The semifinal, the finals haven't occurred, but the semifinals to get people in, which was a two race uh, points race format, right? For men and yep. women. And I don't know where the results are. I haven't, like, that's the sort of thing is like, I don't know where the results are. I don't even know if the results are posted yet. I think they might still be going through verification. Maybe they were posted today. The, they, what I saw earlier was not official. It was prelim. Uh, it could have changed since then, but. Uh, These, this happened on Friday and it's Sunday. We're yeah, preliminary we're already. 48 still? hours in. Yeah. I would assume that they've got quite a bit of verification to go through. Yeah. Because I'm okay. assuming if there were things that popped up as questions, they're going to go back to people, right, for an opportunity to to provide additional proof, maybe if something was borderline or something like that. And similar to, I think they've done that kind of thing with with Sunday Race Club, right? I assume it's a yeah. similar procedure. So There's a, a my whoosh thing, not a hey, you know, I don't cycling, know. cycling esports. So this is preliminary. Where how do you how do you know it says preliminary? So we have it up on screen now for people that are just listening. I don't uh, know for sure, yeah. but I know on Sunday Race Club, there's a blue asterisk check mark uh, next to it, and this doesn't have the blue asterisk check mark. That's the only way I'm guessing. Okay, we know if it's official. Um, I'm going with this is official. This is this is what's the website, Lee? It is results.mywoosh.com. Okay, well, the overall ranking currently is uh, one, one, two, three. So I guess that's the podium. Ollie Jones, Hayden Pucker, and Stefan Von Elst. Uh, and then it goes all the way down to twentieth position to move on 20th. to the finals. Yeah. Yep. So we uh, got here seventeenth, James Barnes. Barnes, yes. Former 19th. former world champion James Jason oh. Osborne at sixteenth. And Thomas Thrall at nineteenth. Thomas Thrall Sneaking made it in. in. Martin Zach Martins. there, unfortunately, on the one outside. position out. Yeah, three point yeah, three points it? down. It's an, up there, like in the top five, is the defending UCI esports champ, right? Is what is it Andreas or something like that? Yeah, it was the Should be Andreasen? Yeah, yeah, yeah the fourth Bjorn, Bjorn. Bjorn Andreasen. Yeah, Lionel Yasin, uh, Jasper Paradins, Vidar Mail, Kiel Power. So yeah, you pop up the ladies too. Yeah, they go to the ladies as well. But this is this is a uh, sort of new territory, right? So like they, we had the open qualifiers. Uh, I don't know who made it from open qualifiers. It'd be kind of cool to know who was it, who was somebody who who made it through open qualifiers based on instead of uh, just sort of like national uh, governing body selections. Mm -hmm. that, um, that would be they, good. That would be kind of cool to see because then you're like, oh, that's a story. I want to follow somebody that maybe made it in from the outside looking in, got in. Did they make the top 20? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if they listed that or if you could find that who, who got yeah. in through a national selection versus a, an open qualifier. I know I saw, I watched the replay more today. There was 113 or 114 riders, at least showing on the riders nearby list and the mm -hmm. two races. So there was a lot of, a lot of people there. So Lee went all the way down to the 67th place where we can't sort of say the top 10, but Lou Bates, I know Lou Bates, she kind of uh, rode away from, uh, from the points when I was watching that. 
Uh, Points are pretty close. I think the so, second race yeah, this one, offered second up race. a lot of uh, yeah. additional points for people to pick up. It was a unique yeah, so, strategy. Yeah, the basics of the races, from what I could tell, was the first race, and Holly's saying um, she was in the races. She's saying they're not verified yet. She doesn't believe. Um, is she saying so she's, that a, she's a competitor, and she doesn't know that her results are verified yet. Correct. Yeah. She, yeah. So the the way the format was is what it looked. No, she's saying they're not verified. She's confirming they're not verified yet. So what we're looking at here is preliminary results. Um, how the is way that the possible? Re- what do you mean? How's that possible? They're waiting on probably reviewing, right? Uh, dual data, verifying stuff like that. Is that normal? Well, what is normal for esports yet? I mean, this well, is what you new, did. Right? You did high high whatever top level mm-hmm. esports where there was prize money how long did it take for you to get your results oh there were times on some of the zwift esports stuff where it would be four or five days after a race that would they'd come down and say this person's results are out yeah it was it was often a few and that was usually during the week like during business days we we have to remember that this race happened kind of into business on a Friday, you know, unless they're working the weekend kind of thing, they may not be looking at this that closely. And I, like I said, you alluded to it. I don't know that I know if UCI is verifying it, if my is checking it, if it's a combination of both, I'm guessing that, that my is offering their similar Sunday race club to this and UCI is going to have to bless it. I'm assuming both are going to have to happen. Um, I, th- I think they're giving the grace period because it's a semifinal and the finals are at the end of October, right? Aren't the... Well, so you're not a... going to have th- you're not going to have this at the finals because it's neutral equipment in a live venue. So at the finals, they've already you know verified those trainers, locked them up in a closet somewhere. So the finals, I mean, other than if they want somebody to pee in well, a cup, the finals, the finals are going to be all, it. Everyone's in the same place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. I, I I just know from I contacted Race Control today over Sunday Race Club, um, and it's in the my whoosh world. It's late night when we do, you know what I mean? It was not late, but it's evening when we do Sunday Race Club in the United States. And he said, you know, tomorrow at the meeting, the verification meeting, you know, I'll discuss your case. So we'll I would say we'll get to that. That yeah. was a teaser. Yeah, I will say that. Uh, I'm assuming the UCI with the wanting to get it right and not have something sneak through that maybe wasn't up to par, taking a few extra days would be fine. And like Holly's saying, like UCI has to be, so like they have to make it through okay. my whoosh verification okay. and then UCI has to say, yeah, we're good. Okay. Yeah, I'm completely, I'm completely okay with this taking a week, 10 days for that. I mean, the finals aren't until what, eight weeks from yeah. now almost? Like it, if it takes eight, yeah, you but know, if the, a week. If the, if the race was like to a day the next day, what if this is a stage race? How I think long? the riders know that they're in. Like you know, I'm that. not saying move on to the next thing. Let's say this is a three day stage race, and you finish the first day. Like, how did you verify the first race to to do the second race? If I'm just thinking. To... Like, is the, is the, my question is how come we can't have this faster? I think it would uh, be faster, but. I kind of understand what they're doing in this situation. And I think it's for the viewer. It's not fast. Lou Bates, she knows if she do a recorded, she knows if she's in like the guys who are in the top 20 pretty much have verified themselves and be like, I've done everything right. There's probably no chance that I'm getting bumped. It's more of like from a viewer standpoint, we're like, well, there could be people that are annulled, but. So how do we know Lou Bates is not annulled? We don't. We don't. She but does. you're saying, but you're assuming that she's like the people in the top twenty know that they're in, but they don't know that they're in. Yeah. Well, and it may be it it may be things going on behind the scenes. I get like, it. I get it. I'm like, just. Tr- yeah, I think I think this is why you don't have the multiples, right? Like I I think this might be a reason why they aren't aggressively doing a three day stage kind of race because they need this time between that and i think i think we can get there and and this kind of goes back to uh, you know i listened to some of the podcasts that my whoosh is producing now and they were talking about some of this which was interesting and some of the technology they were talking about like 
you know, men masquerading as women and things like that. And he's like, it, 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 if I tested and provided my information and John jumped on my trainer and logged in as me and pedaled and even produced the same amount of watts as me in general, our system would sniff that out due to pedaling style and heart rate reaction. Like, like they're, they're starting, they're using some AI stuff to be like, okay, this, it's not just this generic, this person has a 350 FTP and this avatar did 350 Watts. So we're going to assume it's the same person. They're going a lot deeper than that. Yeah. It seems like in that of um, rider style, uh, okay. you know, cadence and heart rate reaction and stuff like that. I was actually pretty impressed with some of that stuff they talked about in there with how deep they were going. Okay. Yeah. And that, and that aspect is part of the reason why I do the double dipping. So both platforms get that because they have all your information in the box and obviously, like, I don't think anyone's going to come sneak on my account and ride, but it's just the principle of, like, maybe there's a possibility that that will help something in the future, you know. Maybe something's not right, trying to drop out, whatever it might be. You're like, no, he has enough history of this certain effort that it's within belief. Okay. The goal is, the goal is to, to get faster, but currently, well, yeah, it's, it's, currently it's taking longer. But the preliminary is good to go. So hey, this is what we're gonna we're gonna do. Okay. I think everyone I would, would say... like to have instant results, but I think this is just the nature of remote location esports. Like everyone is in their own houses. Yes, they've done all the verifications, but especially with a semifinal worlds, the organizers have to do their due diligence, and that just takes a little bit of time. I don't expect much to pop up in it because everyone was pre-verified to get in, right? That's, it's it's basically frankly, sniffing out the funny business if there was any. That's where I'm thinking. Like you're pre you're pre-verified. Yeah. Wouldn't you be already ready to go and look at the the weird anomalies? So it'd be uh, like, hey, everyone's pre-verified. Everyone's on the same thing. Boom, boom, boom. They look at their stuff. Anything that's flagged up, it flags, and then you go, yeah. okay, well, we hold it, and is anyone? Then you talk to all the writers and you go, hey, does anyone have any protests? Boom, verified. Because like, obviously it's going to come out and it's re and Lee's right, it's remote. You can't really do everything like that. I'm not trying to compare it to, yeah. you know, results that happen from professional bike races outside. But I'm just thinking like a pre-verification all the way through the steps, it should be like already ready to go. But I, I, I think we can move on. I got it. It would be great to have it faster. It's not. It's good that they're doing their due diligence. I'm just like, this is this is the one place where you would be already prepared for every athlete to the umpteenth degree, and it seems like we're still waiting on the results. And it's like, as a fan, this is why I want to lead into the fan thing. Like, from a fan perspective, it's like, I watch it, I see who won or see who did the things, and I get to celebrate and move on. Now I'm still waiting on, oh, is this real? Do I have to wait? I have to... I have to like hold on to my emotions to go, Hey, I'm excited for people or not. Oh, that sucks. I, I'm actually looking at it. This at this point, it, it's not quite to this extreme yet, but I'm looking at it more like an IRL race where I'm going to walk away from that event and assume the top 20 are the top 20, but like the TDF, they may have walked into a trailer across the finish line and failed their B sample on okay. something, right? And they're going to announce that in the media three weeks from now then they're, then they're and change the, yeah. the results. Okay. And that's cool. the way I'm looking at this is is it's it's always preliminary, right? Uh, okay. Until uh, they that makes pass sense. The yeah, yeah, they're posted. It's on the th it's on the screen. So yeah. I'm going Canadian, Nationals, Canadian Nationals was the similar thing. The top 10 didn't change, but I moved up two spots due to wonky trainers someone uh paired their power like pedal power meter instead of the trainer as the primary and they got you know disqualified there was two dqs ahead of me and i moved up two spots but we're talking like 17th to 15th the top five where you have like the tom thralls and all those guys you're right. they're they're set you're right i got a nold drinking game i got a nold <laughs> a few days later it's because I didn't turn in my dual power. So there we go. All right. From a fan visual aspect. Visual aspect. How was it? I thought it was okay. Ah, I thought I, I watched the I watched the broadcast. 
and I watch some of the other writers from their perspective. Oh boy, boy. The I only watched the women. Just, was good. Yeah. The commentating was good. The angles of the camera showing the riders was left a lot to be desired. It was hard to watch. Like I spent most of the race going, what is going on? Who are we looking at? What is happening? Why is there 30 people all standing up looking like fish in a chaos yeah. spawn, you know, spawn salmon spawning upstream? Like <laughs> the second race was better because people there was breakaways. And the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, there was like gaps formed, but the third person, actually, Casey and I did the same thing. We were watching James Barnes Twitch stream, but we had the commentating audio on, mm -hmm. and it was way yeah. easier to watch James Barnes stream and then listen to what was going on. But to figure out, but I mean, it's new, and a lot of like ZMS and a lot of the other broadcasts, they just have it dialed with what angles work best to show what. They just use the third person view way too often. And you couldn't tell what was happening at all in that view. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, I, go ahead, go ahead, Casey. No, I, I, I thought the, the commentators did a, a, a fairly good job. There I rewatched it today, the the YouTube portion of it after a primarily focusing on on barnes's barney stream uh during the race and they were slow to pick up on some things like that that first round where james got off the front and took points on the third climb they didn't even call james they just said two guys up the road and then they were looking at somebody in 45th place catching back up to the group and at the base of the climb they pop up and barney and the, the other guy are, are 11 12 seconds up the road and i'm like yeah, this has been going on for for 90 seconds and you have you've missed it um i wish i'd clipped it because barney called them out on that i think he was watching the commentating yeah. stream and in his stream he's like what about me i'm leading yeah, yeah so <laughs> it, it, there was some of that so but i was looking at that today and in my head i was i was a little frustrated that they weren't catching all that but then i i kind of took a step back and looked at it so the overall format was what the first race was a sprint at the base of a climb and then a big climb and so it was points at a sprint, points at the top of a KOM, and then finish line points for 10 kilometers. And then the second race was four laps, 16 kilometers, points at the top of every climb that ended a lap. So it was it was four points banners. I think I liked the format, and I was real. There was a lot going on, and there was a lot of excitement, but it happened too fast to let the storyline mature in the stream. But I don't know that the race would have been as good had they stretched out the laps to make them longer to build the story. But you had those stories of James Barnes did not score a point. And so what was there? There was three opportunities in the first race to score points and four in the second race. He did not score a single point until the second to last. So the, the sixth opportunity to score points was the first point he scored. And he made it through in 17th place by doing two huge efforts on the last two opportunities. Right, and that right? was his strategy, and I'd love to get his perspective on it. So we'd try- Was that a strategy? I don't know. I don't know if it's a strategy. I don't think that was on purpose. Here's the thing is like, <laughs> that's that's the thing is like trying to understand getting the athlete's perspective. It's like, yeah, they have to hold like, and they said this in the in the broadcast of like, you, the semifinals were this week or this whatever Friday last weekend or this weekend. But then they have to hold fitness or they peak for this to get into the world's do they taper yeah. again and then rebuild or do they just hold it for another couple of weeks to then do it? At the, it's like, that's really tough. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's mentally tough. That's physically tough. And it's like a strategy might've been, this is how I read it is uh, James uh, was trying to like, just save the energy for the, for, for the second race because the points for mm -hmm. the points in the first race are not even worth it at that point, because mathematically you could do what he did in the second race. And so you're fresher in the second race instead of the people that went out and just smashed it in the first that race. First race was, wow, was it nine k TT yeah. basically? Like yeah. that was, an, but guys were finishing twelve minutes. It's insane. Yeah, because there was a sprint yeah. point 
what 4k into it and then that sprint point was at the bottom of the hill so i think some people's strategy was you know the, the pure sprinter right was i have to get points on that first banner 4k in and then they 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 went for that sprint point and essentially just sat up at that point and went on to race two um but uh, yeah it was it was definitely interesting there was definitely what a half a dozen just absolute beasts in that race right there were a few of those guys in that on that podium those top five they scored points at almost every banner yeah but then there's game guys like barney who still finished what tops i mean basically there was a little over 100 riders so top 20 percent, top 20 riders getting through barney was dropped in the first race and he was he was off the back yeah, on he was the like second 30th, lap. yeah he was like 30th place and it's like, he chased he, back on right before his attack to get points yeah but if you look at the i was watching the women's race too and like lou bates did a bunch of work and was getting going, going across and she only won first she only got first place by two points yeah, so Those scroll like, down in the ladies' results. I thought somebody said, like, it, it was a very – the ladies seemed to be a lot smaller group of ladies grabbed a lot more points. Yeah. That you didn't have to score over a just – so 20th place was – it's about the same as the men, about 30, yeah, yeah. 34 points. Barney was, what, 53 points, and he got 17. Yeah, so, I think in the men's race, Thrall, he got second on the first in stage two. Yeah. in the first sprint points and then after that i think he just managed to be well, high go, enough go up and you can start you can see the different individual point like the big jump is yeah. ninth to eighth no, no no but go up go up i think you can see the the different segments on the page so you go sprint yeah, checkpoint so you can see great. like oh, okay okay you can see how the point so the points broke out like this is the stage ranking so this is a climb checkpoint yeah Okay. Yeah, so Lou Bates got 20 points and then so third. She got third. Yeah, she got third and second. Then then, so look at the sprint checkpoint. Yeah. So the we can check this no, out. Like, there, yeah, when there's, I did it, the uh there was a strategy. I'm sure that some of the athletes were like, hey, I'm not gonna I'm gonna either go out early because there was the uh Snover. Snover on the first one, she got fifth. I remember seeing it, that. She got fifth on the first lap, right? Or is it like the first thing or whatever it was? And this so she scored a bunch the, of points, but I don't even know if she made the top 20, but she went out. So there's a strategy to go out hot to see if you can get enough points and hold on. And then there's people that are like, hey, I can conserve. And then maybe, uh, as what they were saying on the broadcast, hoover up yeah. the rest of the points. Which These three tabs in this here. Country. These three tabs here are just the first race, that first 9K. So Yeah, it's the first yeah, race. Oh, it's, yeah, it's the, yeah, you can see it, the 8 and 8.9. You have to go to the if second you're, one. Yeah. If you're not the uh if you're not a sprinter, you don't go for that sprint, that first sprint stage at all. Right. Yeah, that's it, probably it, why James didn't do it, right? If you well, but James is a sprinter. That's why I was surprised well, he didn't look to grab those. Here's the difference. So this is race number two. Lap yeah. one, Lou Bates. Lap two, Lou Bates. Lap three, Lou Bates. Yeah. <laughs> Lap four. I, yeah, at that her. point, she was like, I've done enough. Yeah, she's done enough. Yeah, she, she calculated it enough. <laughs> but so I then, think Gabby was similar to that too, right? Gabby yeah. really started gobbling up points in that in that second race. And she went really deep on the first one because I think yeah. she maybe was yeah. thinking, I need to get Check as much as I one. can on the first one. Yeah. She was 14th, lap two, third, third. Yeah. lap three, second, yep. lap four, second. So yeah. Just... But she finished fifth overall where James didn't, and James was what, 17th? Yeah. So like his, you're thinking yeah. his strategy where she's like every point counts to her. Well, I tuned in though. And I, th I think, I think there might've been a little bit of concern with Gabby. I tuned into hers right at the beginning of the second race and they showed the overall points and she was, you know, she was 30th in overall points or something like that going into the second stage. Right. So I think it was like game on. Maybe, maybe she did that intentionally and not didn't gobble up a lot of points. Yeah, actually, It's funny when race. you watch Barney's not even, he in was in 50th 10. place. He yeah, was in lap 50th. two. Same thing. He's not even on the like list. Yeah, but then yeah. it's like lap three, second, second, lap four, fifth. And fifth is double points. The last double lap is, is double points. So that's when he, yeah, I, that was strategy. It, it, that's the only way. I, I mean, at that point, honestly, I thought his race was done. W watching his stream, when he was basically almost dropped on the first time over the hill and didn't score points, I'm like, oh no. Like I, there's no way at this point, if you're barely holding on, 
I don't know how they 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 dug deep enough to get those those That's third funny. and fourth. Thrall came second on the first lap. That was a good little battle between mm-hmm. Lionel and Thomas going over for the first lap. When you look at the second lap, he was ninth. And Lionel's, lap, Lionel's fifth. Lionel's seventh. Like third, Tom, where's even Tom? Like he is not even... Like he's nowhere on the third lap. And yeah. I think he... So he, he just squeaked in. He, yeah, he accumulated enough points to 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 solidify. Maybe he he knew it or he didn't know it, and he just faded away. But like Zach Nair is coming up late, and he doesn't have enough points, and that's why he was what twenty first out of it, right? So he's yeah. not in it. To in the on. end, I thought it was I thought it was a great format. Like I said, the the biggest oh, no, struggle. No, yeah, it was looking very, back it was, on it. Yeah, yeah, looking back on it, the biggest thing to me was was. I think it just it compacted in such a small time frame. It was hard to build some of that storyline in the in the stream real time. There was a lot more of that story, that comers and goers kind of thing going on that you don't see until you dig into it later. They did catch Barney, though. Um, the lady, I forget her name, that was doing the broadcast. She picked up on and, and I then, looked at no. Barney. Yeah, I looked at Barney and he was in 53rd place. And he just got in, right? Like she picked that up and she right. called that out. Like he had to do it. Yeah. That was exciting. You yeah, know? it's tough because it was over so quickly. And as a viewer, you know, I might would have liked to have seen two more laps in the second race. Maybe the first race was double the length. Like it just was like I because BK posted I was I had the wrong day. I thought it was Saturday. And then when BK posted, oh, did you guys see the race? I was like, oh, I'll run down. Uh, I'll go turn. By the time I turned the race on, it was over. Like it was just I mean, it was total minutes. 25 kilometers total. So, I mean, the actual race time was pretty small. Uh, the only reason it took a while is there was 20 minutes between stages, which was ridiculous too. I mean, honestly, if you can't finish that first stage within four or five minutes of the leader, you're out, right? Just be done with it. Yeah. Now, did every, anyone get eliminated from the first race? There was no official elimination. No eliminations, but there's a... Yeah. There was the one incident. I, I guess we can get into that, right? The You know, the, that's the next question. Was was my Roosh ready for this, right? It's, it, it's yeah. beta, and they're doing world platform stuff. And so I'll jump right into that one, because I, I was the one that was like, they weren't ready for this. This is a mistake kind of thing. And I, I went back and looked again today. And I fast forwarded and rewound through it. And if the numbers were right, there were 114 in the first race and 113 in the second race. Mm. So if if 1%, less than 1% of your users have an issue between race one and race two, unfortunately, I hate it for that one guy, but I yeah. think that's an acceptable, that's an acceptable technology issue yep. in a big race like that. I'm not his issue may have been a my whoosh issue with him getting in the pin or whatever, but I I'm not going to hang my whoosh on that on, on losing one rider um, from one race to the other. And to add to that, the, the, you know, it could be his internet, whatever. Like, I don't really know. I know who it is. It's Dean Cunningham from uh, team GB. Yeah. Had an issue. uh, He didn't make the second uh, race. UCI worlds were available Thursday and Friday to the community public. And maybe that had an issue with the public trying to, you know, I mean, just our average amp bevs trying to get in because on Thursday, I tried riding it just after I did a Zwift race, and it sat there and loaded and loaded and loaded. And I got a fairly decent system. So I think it's on the my whoosh side. But like Casey said, if one person out of 114, that sucks. But you can't blame my whoosh for that. Yeah, it might be a my whoosh issue at the end, but I don't think it's... My tires sucks, happen. But, yeah. 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 It's like and, a mechanical... I was quick to be on my whoosh because he was streaming, right? So it, it, it was immediately a little bit more visible problem because he was live streaming similar to Barney, right? And yeah. so I immediately, and, and and I follow my whoosh on Facebook and all that. And there's been a lot of public posts about my whoosh was fine until the last update. And now my machine's a potato and I can't do this and I can't do that. And I can't even get into this world and it's crashing all the time. So I'm like, my whoosh can't be having the worlds, you know, see this, this poor guy's out of the worlds because of all these problems. And when I went back and looked at it kind of objectively after the fact, I'm like, no, I, that's still, that's still unacceptable. Yeah, it, it didn't, Zwift has had issues in the past too. <laughs> Every, everything has issues, right? right. Yeah. 
Everything's it, that's that, there that's is a lot of, of things. I've had an, I've had an issue in an echelon race. Remember when I got my I had RGT crashed, and I remember that one time, Casey, you were like, "Man, you handled that really well." I'm like, "I just got a flat tire," and then I got back in, and I was already yeah. off the back or whatever. It was some other event. I get it. It's high level. It's high stakes. Uh, Chat saying there was I, a few other people that had race. It sounds like there was maybe three. Maybe no, so. No. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's it, yeah. It needs to be documented that there was issues and uh this is part of the remote thing where it's like this is the sport the sport is connectivity yeah. issues build issues your own equipment issues your heart rate monitor you know low rate going into secondary power we're going to that story now we want to move on secondary power issues brian white yeah, make Sunday sure you pair all your stuff. Sunday race yeah. club competitor. Double dipping gone wrong. Yeah, this wasn't even a double dipping issue. So this was a middle of the night racing issue is what it was. Come on, my whoosh. Th this is Throw us a bone. Yeah, 515 in the morning. You're still half awake. I actually got up at 445 a.m. Eight breakfast ish snack. So the course came out. On Tuesday, I signed up, and I'm like, dude, this does not have a freaking 13-kilometer climb. I My mental thought was, I'm going to win this damn thing because it's not – it doesn't have this giant climb. So we get, you know, get in, start streaming. Everything's great. <laughs> the second climb, 10, 10 Ks in, I, I'm like, I'm going to do the Casey Shum. Shum. I'm going to push over the top, see what they have, because there's like a six kilometer flat, if not longer, before the next climb. So I'm like, if anyone wants to go. This is, this is Sunday Race Club. Sunday Race Club. category? Cat 4. This is Cat, Cat 4. four. Okay. Cat yeah. 4. Got it. So Cat 4. Uh, now, I haven't raced in since July 14th. So I've taken, what, five weeks or whatever, six weeks, and trained and focused on this. So I get to the top of the second climb, and I'm like, I'm just going to keep it up. So I got to the top and I held four, four, five or so watts. I don't even know, you know, watts per kilogram. I don't even know what actual watts that is. I got up to speed. I got two, three, four, five, six seconds. And I'm like, all right, no one, no one reacted. So I literally just, I, I looked at the data. So I got up to 30 seconds pretty quickly because I held four, five, four, six. So how much distance left? Uh, this is at 10k when i started this so i still had 35k to go oh it's a 45k race yeah. 45k race yeah yeah okay so, go keep going so i'm thinking all right i'm going to get some of these other top group guys to chase they never chased i held it was 12 no 15 minutes i held it like 340 which is just at my ftp I hit a climb i did like i think it was a minute and a half or two minutes at VO2, which is 400 watts. And literally, I got up to almost a minute and a half at one point, and then they started panicking. I could see five, six watts, like they're, they're, they're going. I come in to the last finish, and they are about 30 seconds, 45 seconds behind me. And Alex West, and I forget the other guy, Alex West, I remember he was the closest one. He was charging eight watts per kilogram up the last little 11% climb. And I held to the finish, broke away, 35 kilometers. So I'm all happy, ex excited. And then someone says something about dual power. And I'm like, are you, it just dawns on me. I never connected my stupid uh, power meter. So you had to manually connect it. It doesn't automatically you, remember It doesn't you? automatically. You okay. have to select it. And so I did not have dual recording. Do that. Now, did you have I'm dual all... power? Did you have another application running with, with power? I Zwift was connected to Direct Connect, yeah, but yeah. not the Power Two Max. The Power Two Max was just chilling. Not so what did you race anywhere. under? What was the power? What was the power you source have, you were racing under? You have to race under Bluetooth connected uh, V6, like the the kicker, right. my V6. Okay. So you have Bluetooth, Bluetooth connected. Okay, Bluetooth, and then your yeah. secondary would be the Power Two Max. Power Two Max power meter, yeah. So okay, yep, and, and and in this now this. So I, like I ended the stream about three, maybe, probably 10 seconds after I realized, cause I'm about in tears. Like I'm just so devastated for the embarrassment of, I just went off the front for 35 kilometers and I got people in chat saying, Oh, cat three, blah, blah. Your typical, like, you know, Oh, he's better than me. Like, so he's not in my group, which 
when you look at the numbers, I average 309 watts. Mm. Numbers are crazy. 3.8 watts per kilogram. And they were behind me chasing, and they had 3.7, 3.6. One guy had 3.9. So, like, I got a gap and just did my FTP, which my whoosh knows. And they actually predicted my FTP six weeks ago when I redid the power passport test before I actually got to it, which is kind of crazy. So their magic behind the scenes is pretty good at actually dialing yeah. it in. And they, I watched your race replay this afternoon. They just let it go too long. I mean, yeah. I, no disrespect to you, Brian. You earned that win because you strategized it well. But I mean, I think I, I know you know West pretty well. I do too. Like he he's gonna beat you in that race if they don't get caught with their pants down looking at one another yeah. back there mid race. And what was interesting to me, and because Holly says it in chat here. They, they they don't want to chase. They let you go because they don't want to upgrade. What was interesting listening to that My Woosh podcast was that was one of the things that they're talking about now is when they're looking at the categories now, they're not just looking at your race results. And I, I found this really interesting. Yeah, They're looking at key moments in the race and what kind of power you're able to do, for example, in the first three minutes of a big climb to stay with a group or the last three minutes of a race. And you can sandbag and sit back all you want, but if you throw up this enormous number to win every Cat 4 race, but you yeah. can ride like me and and ride at 3.2, suck in their wheels the whole way, they're going to bump you up a category. They're starting to recognize what it's taken to win a race, and they're talking about using AI to sniff yeah. some of this stuff out, right? And so it's possible that that... I mean, they closed up 45 seconds on you, Brian, in the last climb, right? You, you, yeah. you had a minute 10 at one point, and you won that race by six seconds. Oh, I know. What it, what it took for them to close up that minute, minute five, once you had it, may have been more and enough for them to category up before you because yours was a steady effort. Yeah, my whole entire power was basically four watts per kilogram and four, five to four, eight on the climb. Once I got away... Once I did that separation effort, which, you know, was, I forget the exact number now, just at my FTP or above, it was like 350-ish watts for 15 minutes. That's a big number. I'm not saying it's not. But after that, it was pure, do as much watch as they are behind me. Like, because yeah, so I, you, I was you, So you raced instead of going, hey, if I leave, the, if I don't go hard yeah. for 19 minutes, I won't get, I won't get booted out of this race. Yeah, like, see, I, I got, that was what I did in Echelon. And I got booted out of the race. <laughs> yeah. I did. I don't exist well, like, in that race. That's exactly. I'm glad they're looking and that's at racing. that. That's racing. That's the mentality is you well, race well, and regardless. And what's and great about that is, the they'll figure what's it out great the about end. that, even, even if you had paired the second power meter, you get that win, you cash that check and they upgrade you. Right. But you got the win. You yeah. earned the upgrade and you were rewarded for it where if you're in the big orange monster and you do that and you get the upgrade, you got DQ'd from the race you got upgraded in. Yeah. And, right. And, and there's the nobody on the line. And the community is going, Oh, you should you're a sandbagger, sandbagger, all this there's stuff. There's a whole forum is, on you. Yeah. 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 Was, <laughs> but that dude who like broke away for 35k and he's a big yeah. cheater. Yeah. And that's that's the embarrassment side. Is like I just won Saturday race club, 40 or 35 kilometer breakaway. And then Tuesday or whenever they post the official results, Wednesday annulled. So, yeah, welcome. And I fully, I didn't follow the rules. It just sucks. And because, like, all right, and all let's let's say they upgrade me after that one effort. I, I don't feel like like Casey said. I raced what I thought was my best strategy. To, they didn't react after the first climb because I went over the top just a little bit. And that everyone dropped off to two yeah. watts per kilogram. I'm like, all right, I'm feeling really good. I know what I can do because from what I just did on Tuesday, I, this next, you know, the next before the next big flat that I climb, I'm going to push up the top, see if anyone comes with me. And no one did. And like, yeah, that's where the mentality of, oh, we're just going to let him go. But, and, and, and you're going to get, you're going to get, but you're going to get annulled because of the mm-hmm. secondary power, yeah. which yeah. is benefiting uh, beneficiary to the platform. But well, most, like other platforms that don't have secondary power, you have a secondary recording usually that they ask for. Yeah. 
So yeah. good practices is for you to not record to Zwift because it's the same power source. You need to record power to max. Does power to max go to Zwift? No. See, no. The, the only thing you're going to train, max... you're doing trainer to one app and trainer to another app. That's not secondary power. You no, need a well, secondary it, power in game. I guess in my mind that I didn't click on connect secondary device. Yeah, that's where I did, messed that's, up. That's a flaw of the game. The game should automatically pick up your stuff. It should remember what I, you have. At yes. least, at least prompt you to say, Hey, I know. Do you, you still want to use this or whatever? So, blah, blah, blah. You just so, so my wish, it, it's in my rooster's best interest at this point to, to look at that as a game enhancement. If, if there are yeah. races that require secondary power results, require them to pair it before they join the pin, because my wish doesn't want annulments just as much as somebody like Brian doesn't want to yeah. have. Because there, well, there was there was nothing wrong with the effort Brian did today. No. We all know it would be approved by my wish if he would have paired that. There's no question to that. And I I'm not glad that that either of you have gotten an old or had these questions, but I am glad to see I feel like the stigma of an annulment is actually getting pulled back a little bit in my wish because they are holding you to the letter of, yeah. of the rules and people make mistakes that's not cheating it's honest mistakes and that's okay right and that's it's, that's why i never, emailed him i said i made a mistake and i deserve because i didn't follow the rules i deserve the annulment now yeah. i will be kind of upset if i do get the upgrade because <laughs> i had yeah. my one shot and i'm a cat you're, you're, you're getting the upgrade you should get I an upgrade well, so I, you should get an upgrade because the power you did is the power you did well, but I don't, I don't think his should... power. De- I don't think his power deserves Cat Three. I think, yeah, right. Oh, it, then you no. Know, if it, but if it does, then yeah, you because it, it was the power overall was in line with the rest of the racers. Like, it, do, you, it, do you feel like they changed something? Because they were talking about changing the categories. D- did 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 your cat their, or race feel different this time? Oh yes, yes, it did, a hundred percent. So I will say, five of the last top eight guys were in the category up. All right. So, yeah, it was totally different. And, and this is why I'm embarrassed and disappointed, too, because I didn't pair this. My last my I did. I, this is my fourth Sunday race club. I've done 20th. I placed 20th and like 26th. And then I hear six weeks later, here I go winning in dominating form. So now it's like all these people that like, I remember that guy. He's dominating. Sucked. You won by six seconds. OK. You gambled early on, and they almost reeled you back in. They that is almost not dominating. Back in. I was out in front for thirty-five. They, they engaged yes. it wrong. That's not domination. It's like uh, my echelon, my my whatever removal from the first echelon. Like I didn't dominate, or maybe I did dominate. I don't know, but it was like a cat B race, and what I had like thirty seconds maybe on the group, or maybe a minute, because they gave up. Now. Ned Bowen with Ned Bowen, we talked to, and you race against Ned all the time. There was a mo- there's a moment where they decide they don't want to chase, and then they let things go out too far, and then they're like, "Oh, well, you need to start chasing, or we let it go and it just goes away," right? Where this one is like, "Hey, we need to bring this person back, whether they're trying to sandbag or whatever. They still want to win without really going too hard to be flagged." But like Casey's saying, is they're taking all the things into account like oh this is a race this is a race yeah. tactical decision that could be strategic in their sort of staying under the the radar before being upgraded where you're yeah. just like hey, i'm ba- i'm riding out there and doing it do you you yeah, just my- forgot to do the double pairing yeah so that was my fault and the terrible thing is like i'm in the habit when i do a zwift race of use my career i am in the habit but with my whoosh I'm not in the habit of clicking that little box that says pair secondary. So from now on, every goddamn ride I do will have that paired. So I never forget again when I'm half tired. You can make a big poster. Well, I think yeah. it should be paired. Are, are your, is your secondary I, paired? I think it should be paired all, all the time. Like it remembers I, well, the device that you prefer. Like a Garmin, my Garmin head unit remember, like when I, because I have two power meters on my bike. I have a, I, I have know a that I'm, yeah, go ahead. I'm not the only one. That like every time, not every time, sometimes my power meter automatically connects. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes I have to manually go in and connect it. So it's a my whoosh pairing issue. Correct. Pookie, I know Pookie, Aaron Shoemaker has, you know, he said every time I go in, I, it doesn't remember my stuff. So that needs improved. 
but hey, well, but yeah, but hey, you, it was a great you, race. It, it doesn't remember it because you're always fighting it with Zwift. If you and weren't that, fighting well, with, hold on, if you weren't fighting it with Zwift, do you think it would remember your stuff? Because it remembers 100%, my stuff. Because what I do is I open up my Woosh, connect it, get to the lobby, open up Zwift, and then Zwift, boom, does it. Uh, so I, the, the pairing screens are open and they're looking for connections at different times. So I'm into the my okay. whoosh lobby or whatever menu. And then I open up Zwift. It, it finds it boom like this auto connects and that's it. So I under, we had this, argue, we had this discussion about, I understand the, the logic behind double dipping, yeah. but when you're in a, a, a top tier event, I wouldn't be double dipping. I would be one thing. I wouldn't want to suck any resources from anything to do the one thing that I'm doing because there's prize money in this. These Sunday race clubs have prize money, right? Now, I'll bet I'll, I'll put money on this. Now that Brian knows that he actually has a shot at the money, he will not forget to do this again. And he may not double dip and put his PC under that stress again. <laughs> I will uh, and actually should roll a kind of the Karoo. Yeah. You should roll this the might have been a good lesson. Well, and it's going to be a lesson for all the competitors because now they're going to be like, if Brian goes, you got to go with them. I know. Yeah, now he's my, marked. This, yeah. He totally marked. Yeah. Every time the little American flag, Brian White goes anywhere near the front, it's going to be alarm bells. Westy yeah, has a good memory. You, you're, <laughs> you are in trouble now. Yeah. Because he's and a heck like, of a racer. He's been around What happens time. is a lot of these guys, you know, they might see you go and go, ah. He's got five yeah. minutes. He's got five minutes and he's going to falter. They know that you can hold that pace. So you're never going to be gone. Yeah. No one is ever going to Somebody might go, go with you, like Mullins went with me. Or that. You actually, it might actually be beneficial now because that's yeah. exactly what's going to happen. Yeah. You're going to have two or three guys go with you. So now you're going to be top five <laughs> instead of top four. I, yeah. it, it makes me want to to go do the passport and and give yeah. it a try although westy knows me you know me but a majority of those guys won't yeah so it's just, it's I, i'm early. curious i'll hear how many new zealand australian will keep doing sunday race club and then if there's a large influx of northern hemisphere riders coming in because there was very few american excuse me uh, riders uh, can it's we at least in the morning, man? Can we at least okay? Let's let's get into this. What are you talking on, about? You woke up. Help you said that. you woke up at four forty-five. How many North American the, North American well, riders? East, are, hey, East coasters. hey, I'm, I'm gonna know, wake yeah. up. I'm gonna wake up at two forty-five to no, do a three, West Coast three o'clock race. Yeah. Now that you say this, okay, let's let's get our plea into my whoosh because their excuse. I heard them say this Friday. The timing of the finals or the semifinals for UCI on Friday was because that was the best time to meet the demands of everyone around the world. And we knew they knew it wasn't the best for some of the New Zealanders and that it was pretty early in the morning. And I'm like, hey, what about Sunday Race Club? Like, it's awful for the entire, you know, Americas, North and South America. It's a terrible time, at least maybe adjust it for half of the year maybe maybe what you yeah. just said brian callison like clicked with me it's like they're they're going into summer we're going into winter when 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 we go winter in north america can we get that switch to where it's actually you know not in the middle of the night for you know the entire two okay. continents i, I would it's be terrible. okay with a 5 a.m race like that would suck but like a two yeah. like i do i stay up and race it or do i go to sleep and try to get up and do a race i've done it once or twice how many times have i ever done it and it's just like for for the even for central time zone like you Kate, are you in central? yeah it's terrible for me yeah, yeah it's terrible central's it's like, terrible it's a four o'clock race right yeah it's a 4 a.m race so you're up at three if you're unless you're up at whatever and everything's ready to go and you're and you you, leave, you, you log in like like brian and like have your uh your your 56 hour uh yeah von top von top <laughs> <And> to... <laughs> von well, two, say, von even two, if it was like midnight two. midnight is doable to stay up uh, the 10 o'clock uh kiss race that i had my cramping session with that was the, that i could do like a 10 o'clock right whatever don't have it at you know 5 a.m yeah. eastern yeah. eastern time for like north america because that's like 
even in Brazil is doing like what they're a six o'clock race, right? So they're ahead. Brazil is, I yeah, believe. Brazil's an, an hour ahead. Like Sao Paulo yeah. is like an hour ahead. So you're even messing up with South America too. So it's, it's yeah. tougher. So whatever they consider. Yeah. All right. Well, so, you're getting old. Welcome to annulment. Good. For yeah. you, buddy. And, and I, and I will be shocked if they don't, because I didn't follow the rules. So they, the the race control said they'll discuss it tomorrow, but I assume they yeah. didn't follow the rules. So no offense to you, Brian. I'll be disappointed if they don't. I, if, you're if, right. they, if they and, let it stand, then and, they're. And I they're, agree. They're, yeah. I want. They shouldn't. I want to yeah, of stand. Course. But yeah. I, but when it comes down to it, I didn't follow the rules. So why should I? Yeah. It, well, it, they don't have it. dual power from you. That's the other thing. That, that's, that's the reason right. why it's that's, not going to stand. Yeah. That's what's me. Yeah. But, so, but I did the national championships, and I had to send power in, dual power. How did I send it? Oh, did I send him a RGT background or a, a bike Terra file? No, I recorded it locally on my computer, my bike computer, because that's sort of the standard that we've set. You should always do that. Well, if that case, then. I, that would be the uh, double dipping aspect, like you were saying. So do we, my whoosh records it, and then the Karoo. So you're also running into that. Do we know? Like if will you were they, saying don't do that. Would they? Would they even accept a secondary, privately recorded? I don't think they should. No, no, I don't I think, think they should either. But I think you should Indy have Bello, that just to go. I have dual recording of this I, for my own yeah. peace of mind. Yeah. Is I what is Zwift crash in the background? Or what? That's yeah. the thing. Is like look, I think it's my good Garmin, practice. My Garmin is yeah. my Garmin's failed a recording once in the last like seven eight years. Okay, you have yeah. a Karoo. You're not using it. This this goes out. Forget Brian. He doesn't want to. He wants to. He wants to do Zwift and he wants to do one power meter well, to two apps on one computer on one device. I'm talking to our audience. Always, Rick. If you have a bike computer or a phone that has like the Wahoo app or the Elite app, or the Saris app, or some other, like Strava, record a, a thing to Strava to your phone. Always record locally, because your computer could crash, your iPad could crash, your Apple TV could crash, or something like that. Always have something else recording. That's best practices until all the standardized games have dual well, recording for all the all the, your competitive stuff. We're talking about competitive cycling. We're not talking about casual racing. stuff. Yeah. yeah, Yeah, that would be correct in Zwift, but with Indie Velo and uh, they have to be in game. Indie Velo and my whoosh, it has to be recorded mm -hmm. in game. Oh, I understand that. Well, but that's what I like, but like, <sighs> beside All right. for this situation, it has to be done in game. No, I understand like I their standard. It. I'm saying you have your own standard, I'm saying the writers have their own standard. And they go, I record to the game. It's dual recorded. If I'm an indie velo, it has tool recordings. I also have my Garmin Fit File with my secondary power. Ter I have tertiary power. Not a lot of people have that, but you can have three power records, yeah. right? And you go, look, this is me. Always. This is who I am. I have my effort. I have it on my Karoo. I have my power to max and I have the, the my whoosh Fit File. Boom. I have two things I can do. I can send you dual power. Right? Anytime you're doing serious racing, it's 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 worthwhile to take advantage of of any additional data you can yeah. capture. I in totally case understand something yeah. comes up, and I agree yeah. with Casey. If they don't annul you, I'll be mad too, yep. because you did not do your dual. You did not mm -hmm. do your dual power mm -hmm. in the game. I'm saying for you personally, for racers, not from you personally, more you you've already tuned me out. For the racers in the world that are considering competitive record locally to your to another device whether that's a cell phone or a uh by computer now we'll say with my whoosh personally i would record locally myself brian white for you too because with my whoosh we don't have access to the dual information as the user my whoosh gets it but we don't yeah um i like to look at my own dual recordings also to, so I know point. what they're going to see when they look at that it. That is a great Indie, point. Yeah, Indie Velo, we can look at that with what they record in the game. So I don't feel the need to have my own secondary as much on Indie Velo. But with my Roosh, I can't see the secondary myself. And I, I'm a data geek, so I want to see my seconds. Um, so I'll record those anyway. Yeah. There. 
we've chastised you enough. <laughs> there was a big update. Are we moving on? We're moving on. I'm moving on. Let's move on. Big the summer, the huge. season, huge, huge update. Absolutely amazing, an amazing update from the season of the the, <laughs> the end of the summer update. They made it. They snuck it in. I got it on Thursday, came out on Tuesday. I actually got it like the day after they announced it, which was amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. First time ever. First time ever. I'm off the blacklist. Yeah. Zwift 1.73 update as we go to the numbers. Well, actually, the numbers. they stopped it because it was causing a yeah. critical we'll get Windows that. error. Yeah, and then so they, they pushed it, it and then it, uh, then it, oh, look at that, RGT. Yes. Oh my goodness, RGT. Thank you. I was tired of looking at the uh, the Yates twins do their thing. Uh, the big thing, the big hype was the hub, correct? The eight, the heads up display, right? Yeah. Was that yeah. the big one? Because I think they buried the lead <laughs> after looking at it on my Thursday when I wrote on Thursday. The lead for me that they buried the lead is garage organization right and bike upgrades you can upgrade bike your upgrade. bike you can upgrade your bike with drops is that what they're pitching yes I that think wasn't in the update. The... hold on that wasn't in the update that was announced though so it wasn't right. in the so update I, but that's the I, they i think they messed this whole marketing up here like like they should not have dropped the actual hud update within 24 hours of the media embargo coming off of the entire season um introduction right because it it, it kind of all got smashed together and it was two different things that they included the hud in the media release for what's coming this season but really the hud came out on tuesday as just part of the release and it was like oh you got this big release and then what less than 24 hours later the uh, the media embargo came off of the entire season release that had this great it had one great thing in it and nothing well, else but but then so then it, it kind of all gets weirdly mixed together yeah the, the anniversary it's like the anniversary update or the anniversary information coming but up we got today. a new challenge we got a new challenge oh. we do we do get a new challenge <laughs> all right brian go so, <laughs> the hud shouldn't even have been included in the fall this season of Zwift no. because it was announced in the spring. Like, and we just got it now. So that's not even new. Yeah, that's that's fake news. Bullshit. For the visual for the visual audience, the stuff behind Brian right now is not the Zwift update. Update. No, it is not. It's it's purely for BK. Do you what is behind, what is behind you right this. now? What is behind you right now, Brian? This is, is... RGT Borrego. Let me get out of the way. Yeah. I could actually I could actually see. turn some of those things off, right? On there. Like yes. I could individually remove yeah. some of those you pieces. Could. Wow, that's a heck of an innovative HUD design. Hmm. And there sure. and, and, and somebody was saying opaque. It's not opaque, it's transparent. Trans, the, yeah, trans transparent. Lucent. You can change the opacity, yes. But opaque but, is when it's darker. <laughs> But it's it's this is all transparent, right? So if you look mm -hmm. at the RGT, we're talking about RGT for the audio only audience. The HUD, every single portion of it, which is like the the metrics, the writer list, the mini map, the gradient, all that other stuff, is it has a transparency to it. So it sort of keeps the screen less cluttered slash open, more open. Right, and you can turn off. Indi you could hide individual spaces. You could hide the writer list. You could hide the gradient. You could hide the chat. You could hide all this stuff in RGT. Indieville also has a customizable, semi, ha you know, semi customizable. Uh, My Woosh also has semi customizable, where you can hide certain aspects of it, but you can't change the fields. In Zwift's HUD update, it's you can change the fields in the metrics. Of a of those. things, I know Casey broke it down perfectly in his stream, which is all of these. Like of the six things you get, only two are new. Of like, hey, you can add all these customization yeah. things. Some of some things are the same, like kilojoules and, and calories are the same, or kilocals or whatever. But and it's only yeah, we, two, we already have watts per kilogram on the yeah, screen. 
and it's it's only yeah. two of the five things that are on the screen that have that were updated. Everything else is the same. And yeah. Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I broke it down. Yeah. So if you if you keep the same things on the screen, so they they give you Watts is always on the screen, right? They give you four boxes. In those four boxes, you can select from seven things. Two of those things are things we already had, right? Cadence and heart rate. So if you pick those two, you have two other boxes to pick from. Everybody's going to pick average power, right? Everybody's going to pick average power. That's a no-brainer, right? They're putting that on the screen. Mm -hmm. The other pieces that you have to pick from are kilojoules, calories, um, TSS, and watts per kilo. Okay, watts per kilo is already on the screen. Some people said, well, I'd like to put it over there. It's bigger, whatever. That, that's fine, right? But it's just restating something that's already on the screen. To me, that's not really a value add. I, I throw that one out. Kilojoules and calories are scientifically nearly identical. What I actually think is funny is if their argument is some people want to call it calories, somebody want to call it kilojoules, put the field in there twice and name it two different things, give it two different headings. They actually have a different calculation for kilojoules and calories. They actually spend the time to have them be a little bit different. Like I ended my race yesterday and I pulled up the two things and it was like 20 calories to kilojoules difference over mm -hmm. like 1300 calories or something. So it was like, they actually went to the effort to calculate these two things independently when they're virtually the same. Like this was such a waste of time. Why wasn't this spent on net power? Why wasn't this spent on a draft thing, like something like that? So what it comes down to is 90% of the users are gonna pick between either kilojoules, calories, which are the same thing and TSS. I mean, that's really your choice, right? Yeah. Your, your fourth field's one of those two. Or you can be like BK and you put nothing on the screen. Just make them all blank. <laughs> I turn them all off. I turn okay. them all off. And as we look at the RGT behind you and it has the Watts savings, we didn't get a Watts savings. We didn't get yeah, a we didn't draft, get draft indicator. No. Would have been nice. And everyone's like, oh, well, you're just behind, you're behind somebody. You're in the draft or you're in the drops. But if you're on the Tron, you don't get that. And we're not feeling the draft, like mm -hmm. physically feeling it. We're mentally placing it on our on our avatar if we're laying the front then we're in the draft if we're behind somebody we're getting the draft right so there's a little bit of feel but uh, having it having a visual indicator uh from the rider or on screen in some way would be beneficial in my opinion the other things are the uh like the mini map the rider list and the segment thing don't have this transparency they're not updated with the transparent sort of Title. No, they're tra they're transparent. They've always been transparent. There's no change to them. It, no, 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 not the, the title. The top tab. Not the top part. Like the, if you okay. look at the, if you look at the top where it says yeah. uh, Zwifters, whatever, that's still white with with black uh, text. Okay, it's not 100 percent transparent. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, there's the, virtually the no change to those groups. Yeah, the yeah. transparency of the of the lists are transparent. Yes, but the actual title of the whatever it is. Yeah. It's not transparent. And they have a gradient now. A lot of people don't like it. It's a it's a hit or a miss for people. I like that I get to see the profile a little bit closer up. I wish it wasn't a uh here just a, a climb. I'll pull it. You'll see it. Oh yeah. yeah I wish yeah, the, right the profile needs to be all the all it's all like <laughs> I've been fighting with this is not a major update as much no. as everyone calls it a major update. This is a quality of life to the most minimal level of a quality of life improvement. There is some things I like. The transparency is good. I do appreciate when I'm doing workouts below your power, it gives you kind of like a time in zone. Like it gives mm -hmm. you the white, blue. Mm -hmm. If the blue bar is oh, biggest, yeah, 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 it means yeah, yeah. you spent that's the, the best, most. That's the best part of it. I like right that. Because I, I was doing, yeah, I was just I doing agree. free riding and I was trying to keep under a certain level. So I was looking at that going, wow. Okay, I got mostly blue. That's what I'm aiming for. But it's just Zwift takes so long. Why do they take so long? This HUD update was announced in May. Zwift Insider leaked it, showed all of these. How are we just getting this now? And it's not a major update. You either turn the HUD yep. off or you turn it on and mm -hmm. it they added like four things and it's just ridiculous time and time again, Zwift cannot push anything out in a timely fashion. This HUD update, like we've been hearing about it for years where they're going, 
a huge HUD update, huge HUD update, you should be able to remove an individual items. I don't want to see that, but I want to see this. The workout player actually in the rivet, Nathan just mentioned something too, where you want to see average power TSS and kilojoules is when you do a workout and it disappears when you do a workout. (laughs) What the hell? That's right. It goes to the list. It goes to the list of the... Do you need a gigantic list Uh, of all your intervals on the left? Why can't it be a mini workout player? Like this is all things that should be in a major HUD update and there's nothing like it's so lame. And we waited like years for this and I just, Oh my gosh. Like, come on. Is is there hope that the, that this is going to be a catalyst towards a, 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 a fully entire redo of the other remaining things and they can build off of this because it took so long do you think that they can build theory, on theory? Uh, well, like you positive, mentioned, like, a positive sense. I've done I like think six, six, six rides now. And like you said, showing that segment, I want to see that 100% of the time. It annoys me that as soon as I'm getting close to finishing a climb, it disappears. Yeah. Then I go downhill, but then I go up a slight little climb, but it doesn't need, it doesn't deem that climb worthy of showing it to me. But I'm I'd like to have that on yeah. the bottom or a different spot. I don't like it being a yes. it's doing yeah. it. Indie Villa does it. I want to move it. Indie Villa does I it. Move it. So when Indie Villa has the feature where you can have your graph, which a lot of people like seeing their, their power graph, and then there's a profile. And you can have those on or off, and you can have them side by side. So it's like 50% is the graph and 50% is the profile. I love the entire profile. That's an RGT thing. I love that. Mm-hmm. I, I wish like that, that is what we had where it shows the gradient in the little mini map or the mini gradient thing. I wish that was downstairs on the entire across the whole thing. So you could see, and maybe it zooms in kind of like a Macintosh, uh, like dock. And when you get into that area, it zooms in, but it, you get to see like, Hey, I have three laps ahead because that's a cool thing too about Indie Velo is they have the laps. You can see how many times you're going to go and do this. So, you know, they're like, Hey, there's two climbs I got to do. I got to do them four times now because there's so many laps and then you have the visual indicator which we had in rgt you knew how much red there was oh that means i'm going to do a hard effort going up i can plan for it and build it out it's like the stand it's the thing on your stem but it's on your screen and not everyone knows the courses like everyone that rides them all the time because they're so stagnant like i don't do mccurry islands unless i do an event like i say there is things that i do enjoy and i appreciate that they've added but yeah like just looking at brian white's that yeah, should be visual. the, the little like little are... the little look ahead i would love that to just be on all the time i can quickly glance up if you're in a race and go okay i know in like one minute there's going to be a climb oh, it like looks you actually good. don't need the full course if i can see 30 yeah. seconds ahead continuously I, I, the, 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 at least for me is i i like the way that they made it look i think it looks great Yes, what they did. it does look good. It just took forever it good. and it didn't impress us, but it's like they did it well because they, they do have good graphic. They have, do have good graphic designers. I, I like their, whatever yeah. their style, their style is nice. I kind of like it. Yes. The top, yeah, I don't think... the top and the left, they look good. I will give them that. They did like, a good job here. on how it looks. It's yeah. just, and they didn't do enough. Wherever the other one is. Yeah. That one. That's why why isn't that match that? Yeah, that's my point. I don't know if that's, yeah. But we waited years for this and it's, did we? we Okay, so then how long, I'm being naive. I I don't, this is actual truth. I don't, I don't really know how long we've been waiting for this because I I never asked for this years. Because I I wait for physics. I can't give you an exact date, but it's been years. They have announced the new HUD update. I could probably go back into the forums years ago. But the fact that they no even way. announced it in May, in May, they had like pictures of all this and it took yeah. them from oh, May yeah, to yeah. actually implement it. it. I think we talked about it on here. Yeah, but nothing had changed from those pictures. Like it, what no. they had in May is what we got in, <laughs> what is it, September. So yeah. I don't know anything about summer. software development, but I just personally feel this takes way too long, way too long. Yeah, I know. Like, I don't know how this takes... Like if they had pictures of this in May, how did it take them three more months to get this in the actual game? 
Yeah, it, it, uh, if it's this be the code, if right? This, <laughs> if if this would have come out in June, shortly after that release, I don't think we'd be quite as upset about it. I still wouldn't be too yeah. excited about it. And I'm 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 with you too, Lee. I don't, I don't dislike anything about this. I was just it 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 was not the yeah whatever. recreation of the HUD that I expected it to be. And as far as like Brian Kellison saying, you know, is this is this leading into the opportunity for things to come? Well, what they're gonna re they're going to change the visuals on a few of these other things. To me, the big miss here is it's really not customizable. I want a menu that says, turn this on, turn this off. And somebody said it in, in one of the forums, and I was like, yes, this is my biggest annoyance. And, and I even forgot about it because I, I just you're so used to it now. When I'm in a race with a big pack, you have 15 names over top of riders heads. And I'm like, I just want to see what the hell's going on 30 mm. riders ahead of me. And I can't look through all the oh, names. You can't turn off the, let, can't turn off the me, names. No, let me turn off oh. the names. Oh, that's right. From, like that's from RGT. Sorry. That's yeah. An RGT yeah, right. RGT. yeah and, and be able to move things. Maybe yeah. I want to see we could turn the off the left thing, mm. but I want it down on the bottom left. And oh, if you want to see, yeah, yeah, you can turn off the so, HUD, but it doesn't turn off the names. No, it turns off it, all the HUD too. Does it turn off the names too? Nope. No, the names are no, there all the time. The names are there. The HUD. I oh, think yeah, so. that's an RGT. That was Maybe. an RGT thing. I thought you could turn. Oh, though they come on periodically. Yeah, it's the thing. RGT had them on or off, and they you do know. So like Zwift would have they would they would randomly pop up, and that's where it, it kind of looks like they're not there all the time. But when they always are there. Then you can. It'd be great to turn them off. Yeah. If you want to play on your phone, you can swipe the writers nearby off the screen on the phone independently, but you can't do that anywhere else. That's an interesting little nugget. That's a you run Zwift on, if you run Zwift on your phone, you can swipe that. Oh, not the companion app. Not oh, the companion app. Not the companion app. Not the companion app. The actual. Yeah. If you <laughs> actually run the 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 core app on your phone, you can swipe that writers nearby. It's always been that way, but uh, like. Just give me that, right? That right there. Just let me swipe yeah. writers nearby off the screen. Oh, man. All right. So another thing they for this season coming up, it was leaked. I've, I went back and did some research. New roads. Wait, leaked. Hold on a second. You mean reckless speculation time? Is this that what is we're reckless in now? speculation from a leaked photo, a photo from a Zwift Insider Forbes article or wherever the hell that come from. And yeah, then Forbes just doing Zwift articles. Now. Yeah. Yeah. So don't know what kind of money went into Forbes covering that or why, but regardless, I don't know if Lee could pull it That's up. reckless speculation, Brian. Well, I don't know what kind okay. of money goes into Forbes. Forbes is just a, a news outlet. They probably just did a I, story on Zwift. In and they my mind, it's like all business and like Wall Street paid, stuff. Uh, paid story. Oh, reckless yeah. speculation. All right. We got to preface hey, that. We're trying to reach Aunt Bev reading the, you know, oh my God. Okay. financial Let's book. Go. Okay. The, the announcement. The so, leak thing. Here we go. Uh, you got to sign up now, In February or so, we had a leaked photo. And this isn't a leaked photo, but this is September a photo 4th. of the article. Look right here. All right. We are looking by the volcano. All right. All right. We got something coming out of the water looking back toward where you come down from the epic my the audio only audience this is a screenshot from zwift of the volcano with like icebergs yeah. coming out of the water okay. and this i cannot find this in game right now so they're saying this is going to happen in game like a Fortnite event like you are going to be on zwift and this rises out of the water which would be cool Fortnite does this i've done 100 Fortnite events where it Things happen in game live. That does sound pretty cool. I have to say. Yeah, I if can't can find off, this. Sounds cool. I can't find this currently in game. I don't know if it's available or not. But in February, well, you're saying it's not hasn't happened yet. How do you mean you can't find? No, no, it? it's not there yet. It's supposed to emerge. That's what I'm saying. Like I was looking to see if it oh, already you has. Were, you were looking for, like you're like you're Mikey from Goonies. Like you're already see if looking there's for a it. tease in the game, like the tips of the rocks. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah, I was looking Chester to see Copper if that was there. Here. So in February, there was a temporarily posted Eric Min ride on Strava that had an elevated <laughs> velodrome. Looking at this exact direct. The location of the velodrome 
looking in this direction, we're getting an elevated velodrome, and the, we're going to have to ride up these little rock climb things to the velodrome. That is my reckless speculation. And uh, I made little, you know, Microsoft Paint art and everything with it because we're going to come. My guess is off the volcano okay, here we up go. through this ancient little okay. climb. So this to is the, the velodrome in the sky. Yeah. So this is the Forbes article. I'll read the quote. Soon as Zwifters will begin to notice these sort of ancient looking structures emerging from the sea. Over time, as we get closer to stage five, these structures that look like ancient rocks or Stonehenge will get bigger and bigger. And they're hiding something, covering something. We're encouraging, we're encouraging Zwifters to put on their best detective hats and take guesses as to what exactly is underneath. And the, the timing of this, let's set the timing of this. They're saying that this, whatever this is, will be the route for stage five of Tour of Zwift, oh, well, I think yeah. November-ish, somewhere in November, right? November 5th, maybe? No, it's stage five. I don't know if it's November okay. 5th or not. Objectively, yeah, this is awesome. Subjectively, I can't, I don't care at all. <laughs> Uh, the, the velodrome <laughs> does nothing for me. I think but, it's going to be amazing for all every all the Zwifter uh, except for me. Like I am not yeah. personally not into the is at all. <laughs> well, I, I want the damn section where I can unfilter where it hits where I hit events and it holds my race thing. That's what I want. If that emerges <laughs> from Stonehenge, I'll be hyped. But I An think entire across world the board, with two hundred kilometers of yeah, new roads, no. not backtracking on existing roads would be amazing awesome. it would be amazing it would be good I, I think this is this is if it's this sort of timed event and they pull it off i think it's really cool well, i actually think it's, it's gonna really look cool. i think it's gonna be cool seeing it progress but what's gonna happen is stage five and it's gonna come out of the ground and everyone's gonna go oh velodrome really yeah. but the problem is when Zwift has gone and said, we're listening to the community. If you look on the Zwift forums, everyone wants a velodrome. And I think they're going to ride on it twice no. and then go, no, why nobody, did we ask for no, a velodrome? If they do not have new event structures and types of events for a velodrome, the velodrome is going to be terrible after the first three days. You know, people, race people... races, sprint races. Right. Like... The velodrome is worthless. On a virtual the, platform. Unless you have steering, they should ban you. If you you can't get on the velodrome, if they unless you have to steering get enabled. I've never. Hey, Lee, you can buy steering now. Yeah. Well, yeah, here, I do own uh, steering. Yeah, no, I just segue, never use it because it's good useless. Segue. Ellison, Hit if me. you look at the leaked Hit me, image, baby. what? If you I, looked at the leaked Eric Min image, which I, it's, I, it's in our Discord, and I will post it. Uh, I'm posting it in reckless speculation right now. Okay. It is banked. Same. Now, I don't know if it's banked as we need it to be. God, bad. It may be bad. Whatever, man. What, whatever, dude. I, have, I don't well, I have no interest in it. I've rode the velodrome, done several velodrome. Like, if it's just a dude, standard it's a, velodrome. It's a climb portal without a climb. It's a climb yeah. portal without a climb. Look at that. It's wood panels. That's a terrible texture. It's a it's an oval. Yeah. This is Stonehenge. This this is my repack this, ridge this part two. Everyone repack yeah. ridge that everyone Everyone's goes to. Want it and everybody, no one does it. Everybody yeah. goes to repack ridge. They love yeah. repack ridge. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to ride by yourself on Swift, just ride repack ridge. Yeah. Yeah, so this, this is my else. assumption. We're getting a bedroom. Or a crank up now. Yeah, crank up well, looks this good. This leads me to like how long it takes Zwift to do anything. Because when was this image leaked? February. Forever ago. Is this February? February? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This and we still HUD. don't have it in the game. It like, doesn't even have a new HUD. Yeah, this image should have been leaked and have been like the next month it should have had a velodrome. The problem with a lot of this Zwift stuff is you get these leaked images, you get these, you know, HUD HUD leaks that aren't leaks. And then all of a sudden it's like nine months later and you get it and you're like, okay. yeah, we don't want this anymore. I, I'm, I'm into this. Okay. I'll be into the velodrome. If everyone, as soon as you jump in, as soon as you get into the velodrome, you have, everyone has steering. Well, see, so actually, like, if you, you look you, at the if bottom, you leave the velodrome, you don't get steering. You can but barely you have make up the players, words. 
It says steering enabled on road mode analog. I think you have to steer. Yeah. It's not an automatic steering thing. Okay, like if so you if, don't steer. Well, you... no, no, no. You have to have steering. So they're going to yeah. turn on steering for everyone that gets. So like, like when you go to repack Ridge, I don't know. Can you do repack Ridge without the plays? No, I don't think so. Can you go in, can no, you, you can go into repack ridge without the place? No. You have to have a steering device. A, a steering device. It doesn't have to be the place. Oh, so then oh, this is a all right, this is good. They're gonna turn this on and the only people that can get in here are the people with the plays or steering. So they have the Zwift ride or they have a thing that can steer. Like there's a wall. Like there's the wall, like when you couldn't get Pay to the play. Alpha, you know, yeah, I love 12. it. I like this is a that's a bold statement. I like that from Zwift. If they're like, if you want to play bash the drum. You need no, no, no. It's it's the it's the gated the gated community. Yeah. Like before, you could get the Alp. Like you can't just ride the Alp for free. You have to level to level ten now. It used to be level twelve. You couldn't climb the Alp. When I first got on Zwift, I wanted to climb the Alp. I like this. If they're bold enough to go, hey, you can do the velodrome in this new world. You have to do Zwift plays, and now they're available in Canada, so the Canadians can't complain anymore. Everyone so else can complain. They can't doesn't have them, but I like this. I like if it, you can't get in without steering. I like that. Cause there's no point to do it. If you don't have steering, it's, there's no point. If you can't steer, it's a oval. It's I've done it on Indie Velo. It's not impressive. It's yeah. just go around and sprint. No, I mean, it it's, sucks. It's like cool. And then it's not cool. So the elimination of- races on the Velodrome are very difficult and they are kind of fun. Any other race yeah. sucks. That's the only race worth their crap tactical on. positioning on the velo are... is not as is not like steering on Zwift. Points it's races not. were fun on the on the velodrome, but it, 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 if you did it, points every lap kind of stinks. But if you do points like every other lap, every yeah. third lap, those were kind of fun. But going back to part of their release was hardware stuff too. We were talking about the plays and you mentioned Canadian accessibility to the plays but the this hardware stuff is all over the place now like it's great they announced all these there's a bunch of new trainers now that are zwift ready i mean all the wahoo ones were really zwift ready already they're just officially there now there's a couple new ones coming but the plays are going to be available in canada through another partner but the click and the cog are available worldwide (laughs) through wahoo and the ride frame, I think, is only available where the plays are, except for the Canadian connection. And I'm like, well, why is it got to be this hard? They're all Zwift things. Totally. Zwift needs to make all these things available worldwide. Like, how hard is it to get a worldwide distributor? And if Wahoo's the trick to doing that, then hand Wahoo the plays and let them distribute them. Like, find somebody who you will can, get these things out there for everybody. You can get the frame with the like the the frame with the trainer the Zwift ride through Wahoo, you can't buy just the frame by itself yet through Wahoo. It's not on their website. You either oh. have to buy the whole thing or not just the frame. Like it's just confusing. Yeah, it's gotta no be a fina- it's gotta be financial reasons why that that's happening. I think, no, I think it's a partnership thing. I don't, I, I think they're okay with partnering their equipment with a Wahoo trainer and letting Wahoo distribute it. But if Wahoo isn't attaching it to one of their things, Zwift That's doesn't I say want, it's a financial thing. Yeah. They don't want, they don't want to make tax mad because Wahoo gets all the, the kickbacks on all the. Zwift yeah. And why would Wahoo want to sell the frame without right, for nothing? Yeah. yeah. But you're saying they sell the clicker. Well, and but because that, but that kind of goes with the trainer, right? Is they you can buy the little single cog click combo. They call it an upgrade pack, right? For the trainer, you can buy that through Wahoo. Um, but that's for any trainer, or is that just? It for- would work on any Zwift ready trainer, but Wahoo's distributing it because that's what you need to if you want to upgrade. Oh, so you got to buy the cog. You have to you have to buy yeah. the cog. You can't buy the clicker by itself. No, it's the pair of them, but it's it's pretty cheap. It's 70, okay. 80 bucks, something like that. It's not too expensive. I like but it's that. like they got to figure that out. I mean, that that it, we got the ZRL out there, right? I mean, Zwift's own biggest race thing that that's the big argument, right? Is they they still don't let us steer in that race, which just aggravates me. It, it, it Zwift's losing money because of it. If they open up steering well, to ZRL, I don't think they're making money on the plays. Yeah, but the whole point is that to to 
to get people tied to the platform, right? Like but the plays are not the reason to tie the platform. The, the plays are just to appease the people that are tired of the stagnant content. So if we have a play, it gives you a little bit. It's like sesame seeds on a bun. It's like you're buying the hamburger well, and you already got the bun. You just need sesame seeds. Yeah, but it's a, it's it's like, a oh, gate, that's pretty nice. I like sesame seeds. It's a gateway, to, a sesame it's a gateway to the virtual shifting too, though. Right. It's kind of like the like the Twitch, like you know, a, a gifted subscription isn't really about much gain to them, but you know, one percent of your gifted subscriptions ended up resubscribing. Like, you know, ten percent of your Swift plays end up going to virtual shifting, and then then they are looped in, right? Then they're hard in to Swift, the Swift ecosystem. And that's why I feel like they're losing is it, if they say we're a steering platform, the plays are available worldwide. And if you want the advantage of a play in a race, you need to buy the plays and get on board, right? They're going to make those sales. Even if it's not a huge profit, they're building their ecosystem. They're building their community right now. They're, they're in their own way, right? Just by not doing global shipping, and it gives everybody else the excuse to be like, I'm not going to buy the plays and it's a bunch of crap because it's not worldwide and we're going to shut it off in these races because it's not available to everybody and it's not fair. And I'm like, can you get all these barriers out of your way, please? And just let us have this. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I don't understand what the holdup is to this. This has been a year that the plays have been out. I bought the plays the moment they came out because I did not read the fine print that the plays didn't have virtual shifting. I thought yeah. the virtual shifting was the very nature of the plays, not the trainer oh, the itself. Trainer, yeah. And I remember the moment I got them and went in and was like, why don't I see virtual shifting? They went on the forums and they're like, Oh no, the plays have nothing to do with virtual shifting. It's the trainer. You need to have the trainer. And I was like, mm -hmm. why did I even buy these things? The plays do. Well, why did you good. even buy it? Cause of the prices in Canada, dude, what are these numbers? Well, it was, oh my God. Well, it was Dude, the kicker climb, the kicker climb boot is like 85 Canadian. Oh my God. It was 50 bucks for me. Show you, they do have the cog, the cog yeah. and the, the, the cog. is 109 bucks. Canada, man. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Swift ride with kicker core is 1999. But I mean, the plays do work well. I enjoy the buttons. You can go through the menus. I just was under the impression that when you bought them, you got virtual shifting and that wasn't the case. No. Well, and if I'm understanding correctly, the V4 and V5, which were said to get it, won't get it now. So won't get it. Yeah, I think that's pretty them. much they're not getting it. Yeah. But I can get a reconditioned V6 for fifteen hundred dollars. Mm. Cool. Warranty return. Oh, Canadian. Okay, sorry. Yeah. 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 These Canadian <laughs> prices are rough here because the, uh -huh. the kicker core in the US just dropped to four ninety nine, which is a really good deal yeah you can get the reconditioned one for 549 canadian. that's not bad canadian yeah so, I, here's a question uh i know the kicker bike the shifting goes from the handlebars to the trainer so what would now what's keeping wahoo from doing that with the v6 is it because they already have the plays, they have a deal, or they don't want to go into the hardware side? Because I think that's the biggest thing. Like, I'm so curious about the Elite Square, how that is oh, going to the work. Elite does it through the app on the phone. Yeah. Oh, it bridges. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a bridge built in. That's how Elite got away from, like, the Elite Smart Bike or the, the Elite Frame is actually probably the best one to get because it's compatible with, all yeah. the cycling apps and it has uh crank length adjustments yeah because the shifting is done through their phone app which sends its own proprietary signal you know to the trainer yeah so yeah. the assumption is when that comes out and is released for the public it's your your game whatever game you choose will communicate with the elite app which will then communicate with the trainer right and it will right now zwift plays that role when you're using the virtual swift virtual shifting in swift zwift is playing that that uh translator right where in the elite idea is the elite app or whatever that is on your phone will do that it will it will take in the signals from the game translate those in combination with what your shifters are doing to and i think every trainer system needs to look into to that platform agnostic 
type of virtual shifting eventually. I think that's the way we're going. Um, I, unfortunately, I think some of these trainer companies are going to have to accept. I think that might be the death of the trainer bike, though, like a, a true yeah. indoor bike. Right. Mm -hmm. I think I think that concept might get obsolete with this uh, virtual shifting concept where you can just strap yeah. on shifters to a bike frame well, because you you separate components then. Right. Like you can you can buy a frame separate than a trainer. You can upgrade your trainer separate than a frame. Well, like what if you have like a V4 yeah, and you can go buy a V6, you now get all the benefits of the V6, but your frame never changed. Yeah. Like that's exactly what's going to happen. You're not stuck to this bike that's getting obsolete and outdated and you spent $4,000. Yeah, but it has some yeah. features that you're not going to get from a regular bike. Like just, it? A, yeah, it has its well, virtual shifting. It has its bars. It has its own bars. It has, it's a, uh, that's it's why got, the frame it's got an incline. The kicker bike has, has features that oh, yeah, are not available on, on the frame. Bike. Like the kick, like the Zwift ride and the, and the elite frame or the elite square don't have i mean the riser yes that has its it has its ability to do that but the, the zwift ride does not i don't so think if you look i don't at, think it's compatible for with then the you're comparing car. four thousand dollars to two thousand dollars yeah if you look at wahoo right in the wahoo getting, ecosystem features yeah if wahoo came out with a virtual shifting mechanism of some sort a shifter of some sort um or a frame of some sort you're looking at a kicker which is a thousand bucks right top end kicker without the moves thousand bucks you get a uh what is it the the riser whatever it is the climb. Uh, climb yeah the kicker climb and you put a frame in between there with shifters on it you add all that up you're still at half the price of a kicker bike right i mean that that's that's the problem is it, it if they if these trainer companies start coming out with this virtual shifting, they're going to undercut the market on they're, they're, nobody's going to want to spend the money for that big indoor bike unless they just want simple, right? They don't want to put those pieces. I still together. think that there's, I still think that there's an audience for that. I think there is, but I think it'll cut into it. Yeah. Yes. If you're, if you're budget, if you're super budget conscious, then yeah, then you're like, there's, but there's people that don't have a bike and they don't ever want to ride outside. They're like, I'll just buy the, the Peloton sort of slash kicker bike, smart bike, and have it all integrated. It's all done. It's adjustable. I don't have to do a bunch of trainer stuff. Yeah, you can swap that out. But it has things that wow. the frame that the ride doesn't have or the or a bike doesn't have. Oh, yeah. Like, it's like the same people buying S-Works, $15,000 Tarmax. You know, they might look at that and go, hey, I like this all-in-one package i'm gonna buy myself a kicker bike yeah you know because they don't you care get, if it's five thousand dollars you get crank length on the kicker bike you have the virtual shifting on the kicker bike it's a, a direct connect they have direct connect and, and the new one has the wi-fi uh it has uh you know the kicker climb aspect of it which is added into it and then it has uh adjustability for multiple yeah. users I I think think your bike usually has a good adjustability, right? What of oh, yeah. those things? Yeah, yeah. What of what of those things can you not get with the new Elite package when it comes out? The Square well, with the high end Elite. Uh, well, I think what the market they've is. They've got the is, riser, right? Well, the riser is an extra oh, cost. What You're not getting the riser with the frame, right? But have, they can bundle all that together and sell it, right? Yeah, and the, it's the still risers. Be... The riser is almost the prices of a kicker move. The riser is like sixteen hundred okay. bucks, I think. Well, because how many? Tens, it's got if not hundreds too, of thousands of bike trainers are out there. They're just tapping into a market where they can sell yeah. more stuff because there's people like that already maybe have a V4 or core that are like, man, I wouldn't mind having a dedicated bike in my living room or my garage or my downstairs where I don't have to use my outdoor bike. Well, the frame is what a thousand bucks without the trainer. I think yeah. that's where the market's going to be is the frame without the trainer to, you know, sell to people who already have trainers. Cause like there's gotta be hundreds of thousands of trainers out there already that people yeah. have their own personal bike on that trainer. I, under, I understand all over it. Uh, I understand Casey's point of it. It could be undermining the, the all in one smart bike. It could be, it's going it to cut into it or it's going to add, it's going to bring a new customer. 
mm-hmm. along with the smart bike people. The smart bike people are like, hey, I like well, all I just- this stuff. And then the frame is like, hey, I want the f- I want the options to have a trainer that I can upgrade and then hold onto the frame, but it's not going to have all the options. That's the reason why I don't care about the frame. I like the idea of the frame, but I want to be able to shift in other platforms because I use other platforms. So it'll lock me into just Swift. And I like my kicker move and my kicker climb. And so those are two aspects that are like the big things for me where there's other people who are like, I don't like the movement. I don't care about that. And I, I like the, the all in one package. Yes. You pay a premium of it, but you get all of it there and it's all in one thing. I'd like to know the statistics on, I mean, Zwift would never publish this, but how many people are going from zero to Zwift or He talked a little bit about that. He talked a little bit of, I don't think he talked about it in depth. Maybe I'm pulling this out of, this is my reckless speculation, everyone. When he said that we're going after cyclists and Mm -hmm. we want to get them, the cyclists back into, hey, indoor riding or indoor stuff is something that's in addition to you being a cyclist already. And so trying to get those people in, instead of the fitness junkie or the Peloton-esque person, it's like, hey, we're trying to get cyclists into cycling indoors that's where it's like hey can we get them to get this sort of all stop like entry level to go hey i'm not going to touch my bike and i don't want to do a bunch of this stuff if i can just get a trainer and a thing that kind of i can just hop on and hop off like a peloton sort of smart bike thing that is not high end to go hey i've already spent like 10 15 grand on a full bike i'm not going to spend another five grand on a smart bike i'll just buy a sort of a middle ground thing that'll separate myself from a high-end bike that I don't want to mess up or do something. You know? What I like about it is we have a lot of these conversations through our streaming platforms with people getting into it. And yeah. I like the fact that we kind of have this roadmap that you can build yourself into it now where it used to be like, well, if you know you're going to end up at a smart bike level, you just need to make that leap because everything you spend up to that point, you're throwing away where now I can be like, Oh wait, if you start with a, if you start with a core, right? The, all of these other things are compatible with a core. If you're not going to get into elite racing, you can buy the core. Now you can add on the plays later for virtual shifting. You can add on, you know, a frame later an elite frame. Like you can, you can build, right? A lot of people aren't going to go spend drop four or $5,000 in one fund, but they may drop $800 this year. Next year, they're going to drop $500 to get the the climb. Yes. Yeah. You know, and they can build into Uh, it and you're not, you're not throwing stuff away to get the next upgrade. Yeah, I agree because you bring up a great point, which is when I was first telling people like this is before the pandemic or whenever is, Hey, you can speed sensor 60, 70 bucks and rollers. Like if you have that or you can get on, you know, yeah. or it's 1500 bucks, I, I can't, 1500 to like 2000 bucks. That's what the first like kicker was, right? The first kicker yeah. was like 15, 14 99 or something like that. And then the, the tax Neo is two grand. It was like that huge gap of like, whoa, rollers and or a power meter and rollers. Like, oh, wow, that's, you know, like a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. Uh, and then that's a huge gap. Now there's so many things where you can build onto it. And that's that you brought up a great point where when you are helping people get into the journey, they're there because like we have people that are on our streams that come in and like, hey, I'm new here or I have this. Can I use this with this? Options are one yeah. thing, but also like simplicity is another thing. If you have a bike, 500 bucks, get a core, unless you're going to go elite, 500 bucks, get a core yeah, with kicker plays core. The and the cog core, yeah. and, and you're off and going, right? Like, I mean, and, and, and you've got the same setup uh, for all of the community stuff that the four of us have, right? You're just as effective at yeah. that if you have the virtual shifting and you stick to Swift. Um, yeah. The kicker core yeah. is, 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 is become, has become because of the jet black, the, the Zwift mm-hmm. hub sort of brought that price point down the kicker core. And I don't know what the comparable one is for elite. And I don't know if Sarah's has Sarah still, I think has the hammer three. Uh, and yep. then the knee, the tax Neo, I think is their entry level one, which is like 1500 bucks, right? Neo two T something like that. So it's, it's a thousand dollars less than the Garmin option. So the Yahoo, the, the, the Yahoo, the Wahoo one kicker core is a good entry level for people to get in now, non-competitive because it's usually not a certified one to get competitive, but it gives you all the things that you 
are looking for, which is the resistance, the, uh, you know, sort of the, the road feel or virtual feel of the road. So yeah, that's, that's good. It's a good place where we are now. Uh, and I think it's going to get better. I think the, uh, was it the, even the, what's the new thing that came out? It was also announced as well. Last thing. Probably get out here. Victory. No, not the Jetpack Victory. It was the... There's... What's the, the, hardware, the cog. Was... No, it's the cog. It's for Zwift. It's the cog for your trainer. Instead of taking the entire free hub body off, you slide over the cog. Yes. I was, I'm trying to think of what exactly it is. Well, there's it's... a V2 cog coming out, but it's just... Like well, no, I saw, the, of... I saw the training video of it. Like Zwift had it on their video. I don't know if you can find this, Lee. But it's like... It's essentially you're putting on a cassette, but it's just the Zwift cog, right? And so they're like, hey, they're they're going all in on the, you don't need to shift. Like you shift our thing. It's like the one cog. So you use our virtual shifting. The cog is just like an easy way of doing a single speed rear. Like you take yeah, your cassette you, off. You so if you buy the front, piece. yeah. Go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I cut you off. Go. No, you put the plastic piece on and it comes with the click that controls the virtual shifting. Yeah, but, but it's, a lot it's, of people it's are saying it, it slides on like a cassette now instead of yes. taking off the entire free hub body, which it was at the the initial version of it was, oh, remove the free hub body on your trainer and then you can do the cog. I think you were talking about this Lee when it first kind of came out. No? Well, yeah, well, no. It's always been that way. Yeah, it's, it's always been... been that way. It's just the way they sold it. They sold it with a free hub body to begin with. Well, but and... like the first the, version of the cog I've got with a with a cassette wrench, I can take it off of the free hub body that it's on. And the Gen two, you just, just, you just slide it on more... like a cassette. You don't have to take the yeah. free hub body off. No, I don't. Yeah, uh, I can swap it like a cassette. And the oh, Gen two just just selling it for adjustment. Body. Yeah. Okay. Because apparently, because what was happening is people were putting the cog Gen one on, and it's fixed. So if you couldn't find the exact right yeah. gear, it would make noise. Where the Gen 2 version allows for a, a little, little bit of left, left, right, so you can dial it in okay. so it's silent. But you don't even need to do that. If you already have a cassette, mm -hmm. you just put it in a gear that's quiet and call it good. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I just pick, I get in the middle of my cassette and leave it. I, I don't put the cog on. Anymore. I do that I a lot them. more. Now. I'm the, I'm actually because I still shift on my bike because I do so much other stuff. I'm actually going right to the good the good riding line and then I do my workouts like that. And it's just like, yeah. I'm just naturally going from where I kind of, when I get off the bike because the, the spring in my uh, derailleur is like, you don't want to keep it stretched out. So you go all the way over so it's compressed. And then I go into the middle of the cassette and I have that sort of easy whatever gearing so it doesn't rub as much. And yeah. even though I don't have virtual sh virtual shifting, I kind of live in that world now. So, Brian, are you awake still? And you're gassed. He looks he looks like I'm he's awake. already annulled. He looks like he's already annulled. He was up at four in the morning racing. I know, he did the race yeah. and he was up all day. I'm probably just, uh, months. waiting on the official email. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We could get it in. All right, we we've gone almost two hours. We need, any any uh, knuckleheads that have a question in the in the chat that we want to fit in. Oh, they're they're asleep too. Yeah. All right. I think we're good. We're good. Anything uh, less? That was a lot of stuff. That was a lot of stuff. We spent a lot of time on the the world championship semifinals. We'll have more on the regular finals. Uh that's it. Zwift did kick off their World Series stuff, but I'm was we're not gonna dive got... into it. But it's it's an also happened. I think they screwed up. Um, they should have moved their timing because they lost basically everybody. That I, yeah, was I think that was in the world. That might have been a power play to kind of like, hey, let's go against the world mm -hmm. championships and see if we can hold yeah. on to audience. I, I don't think remember. they might have lost that play. <laughs> I think they lost that play because I didn't watch it. I don't think I. I don't think I watched it. It. It was a decent race. I liked. I liked the race. I liked the course that they did. I. I thought it was good, but a lot of the big names weren't there. Um, yeah. They would have had. I think had they adjusted the timing, I think they would have had 75 other riders there. Um, they could have had 200 elite riders. I think they had close to 100 that were pre-verified yeah, and all that stuff. And, and there were some known names in there. But um, yeah, and th and that's a series, right? So it just started. It's a it's a uh, Grimm's ask, and it was a Zwift World Series is yeah. their, 
their elite, elite league World or Super whatever. Game. Yeah, yep. for this this winter. Um and like I said, it was good. I I liked the I liked what they did with it, but um it wasn't just a hang on to sprint kind of race. It was it was in a terrible world. I mean, who wants to ride Richmond? But um the, the topography was good. Very cool. All right, the guy who's gonna turn off the show is not in the seat. So we're gonna <laughs> he just left, yeah. He left. We're going he's in. getting the music ready. Hey, he's getting the music ready. He's going to the music library to pull the music so we can play it. <laughs> So my, my tip for all you racers out there while we're waiting for Lee to come back, the tip for all you racers, if you've got no indication in game that you're getting a draft, you might not be getting a draft. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I did a, I, I did a complete race that was a no draft time trial race and i did not know till i crossed the finish line that there was no draft but and i was angry the entire like race <laughs> yeah. because i'm like my whoosh has broken their draft <laughs> and as soon as i crossed the finish line and started writing a little bit in chat one guy replied and said it was a tt and i was like oh, oh. all right I'm happy with that effort then. <laughs> I held like 4.0 for for 35 minutes That's holding funny. on to this dude's wheel. So I did yeah. I did something like that during the pandemic. There was the USA Cycling Wednesday races and they had like a at the tail end like Ooh. October it was like four or five races that were time trials. So it was like a full points thing, right? So I was doing every single one every week. Uh one week they they uh we're doing a time trial. It was like specifically a time trial and they didn't turn off the draft. And then so like, Oh, we got to do that same one. Oh, it was God. the Bologna, it was the Bologna time trial. I'm like, I am, I don't want to do this again. I ended up doing it again, but it was like, Oh, so difficult mentally. You're just like, yeah. why is, why is the draft on? What's going on? It's supposed to be a time trial. And you had the opposite. You had the opposite. You're like, why is, why isn't the draft on? And you're like, Oh, I was stubborn. Trial. I was stubborn and I wasn't going to give it up. I honestly, I don't think I would have done as well had I known it was a TT because I wouldn't have fought to hold on to him. I wouldn't have pushed myself that oh yeah that deep. Um, you were getting so mad. I was so I was mad. so mad. Um, but I got second. I'm I was thrilled with it actually. Uh, the the guy who beat me should have beat me by a lot, not not a second at the line on a sprint. All right, we want to play the music. Lee, Lee's like I'm done. Lee hope, worked on his house all weekend. I hope Lee so. queued up the music he was talking about, maybe closing it with. No, no unfortunately all right. not. All right. <laughs> no more. That's it. We're done. It's a two hour show. We're good. Everyone's getting bonus right. two hours now. They're getting a bonus hour. Good night, everybody. Good night. Hey, we'll bye see bye. you. Yes.